he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to Easter service. We will begin worship today with our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. So hear these words. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. He's risen. He's risen indeed. Happy Easter. Just a couple of songs to get, to, uh, get the day going. got through that without a mistake. Uh, a little grace today, if you would, please. Uh, a little rusty. I haven't played in, in some time, but I uh, hope you're enjoying the music uh, nevertheless.
He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter to you all. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the 28th chapter of, uh, of Matthew, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message to you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a special thing to stand on Easter morning in the cemetery and watch the sun rise to bring life to a new day. I mean, what better place to celebrate the resurrection? One day I will spend Easter at Shady Grove Cemetery in Kentucky, where my father was buried 57 years ago. I will stand and be reminded of the love of God in Christ Jesus that offers life to each day. It offers hope for a life to come. Easter morning. Going to the tombs of the ones we love seems the right thing to do. And this is where our gospel picks up on that first Easter morning. After the Sabbath, as the first, week of, uh, first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. There isn't much written in the Bible about Mary Magdalene or the other Mary. People for ages have argued uh, over whether or not Mary Magdalene was a prostitute, a, a claim not made in the Bible. And the other Mary, not Mary the, the sister of Martha, as one would suppose, rather Mary the mother of James and Joseph, who, who are, whoever they are, perhaps well known to those who heard the gospel of, uh, from Matthew for the first time, but for us, not so much. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Not really significant characters in the Gospel of Matthew. Well, other than the fact that they were the witnesses. The only witnesses. And they witnessed it all. They were there when Jesus died, looking on from a distance. They were there, sitting uh, opposite the tomb, when Joseph of, Joseph of Arimathea rolled the great stone uh, to the door of the tomb to seal it. And they were there at dawn, on that first Easter morning, simply going to the tomb of a friend as people have done before them, as people will do long after, going to the tomb to simply mourn the death of their friend and loved one. I think that it is significant that the Bible tells us that Mary Magdalene and the other uh, Mary were witnesses. First and foremost, because they were. They were the only ones who were witnesses to the death, burial, and rolling away of the stone of the empty tomb. They were witnesses, the only one. And that, and that reveals the most significant thing about them being the witnesses. They were women. They were women who followed Jesus and provided for him. What is so important about that? Well, in the first century, women had no credibility. They were non-members of society. Their witness didn't count. Only the witness of men counted. Witness of two men at that. Women had no credibility. And it is this very fact that gives the gospel so much credibility. Had the story been fabricated, say fabricated as suggested in the following verses of, our, of, of the text we read this morning, the fabricated story would have had two men as witnesses in order to give it credibility, in order to give it credibility the story needed to be plausible. The very fact that women were the witnesses to the events offers tremendous credibility to the gospel story. Why women? Why not men? Well, it is simple. 
There were no men who were witnesses to all these events. The death, burial, the rolling away of the stone of the empty tomb. Where were they? Where were they? Cowering. Cowering in an upper room. Hiding from the Romans so as not to be recognized. I mean, where is the rock? Peter, Mr. Deny Me Three Times, where is the rock? Eating crow when the cop crowed. Some friend. And where are the sons of thunder? Where are the ones who want to sit one to the left and one to the right of Jesus when he comes into his glory? One to the left on the cross and one to the right on the cross. Oh yes, Lord, we are ready to do whatever it takes as long as it isn't the cross. Where are the sons of thunder? Some thunder, some friends. And the others, where are they? Scattered in the garden when the mob came to arrest Jesus. Where are they? And where is Judas? Where is the zealot, the fanatic? Where is Judas, his friend? Hanging by, hanging from a nearby tree, as it were. Some friends, some disciples. There is no biblical witness to the disciples witnessing these things for one good reason. They simply were not there. When Jesus needed them the most, they were gone. Who was there? A couple of women. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. They were the ones who were the witnesses. They are the ones who saw. What did they see? Well, sure, they saw the crucifixion, gruesome, degrading, humiliating, demonstrative. Sure, they witnessed uh, uh, to the burial, watching the synagogue leader doing that which was right, burying a man who did nothing to deserve his death, much less the manner of his death. Sure, they saw these things, but that, that was Friday. That was three days ago. This is Easter morning. This morning, there is good news. What was it uh, they witnessed on this first Easter morning? And maybe more importantly, what was it that they did not witness? Matthew tells us that they went, uh, that, they went uh, that first Easter morning to simply see the tomb. They had no idea they would see so much. They saw an angel of the Lord ascending from heaven. The angel rolled away the, the great stone, causing an earthquake. The angel, with the appearance of lightning and clothes white as snow, as if delighted with his work, sat on top of the stone. The women witnessed the men, the guards of soldiers, faint with fear. More men, more disappointment. Where the men fainted, the women stood fast. And the angel spoke to them, fear not. Good thing, what with all the fainted men laying around. The angel says, good not. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Fear not. You are looking for Jesus. He is not here. He has been raised. Come and see where he lay. These two women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, were the witnesses to the first Easter morning. But one thing uh, we should note, they were not witnesses to the actual resurrection. This they did not see. When they looked into the tomb, it was empty. This is not like Lazarus where they watched him come out. The tomb was empty. The stone was rolled away so that Mary and the other Mary could look in, not so that Jesus could get out. He was already gone. These two women, these two women were women of great faith. They had the faith to stand by their friend while he was executed and buried. They had the faith to return to the tomb. They had the faith to believe what the angel had told them, even though they had not witnessed the resurrection. He was not there. There are many reasons why this could be, and the most preposterous that he had been raised from the dead. These were women of great faith. They had seen the empty tomb. They had not yet seen Jesus. They simply believe what the angel told them. He has been raised. He will meet you in Galilee. Great faith. What a three days for them. Watching their friend and teacher be executed. Watching him be buried. Witnessing an angel roll away the stone of the tomb so that they could see that he was no longer there. So that they could see that he had been raised from the dead. And then, then the unimaginable happens. 
Jesus greets them. And what does he say to these women of great faith? Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There I will meet me. There they will see me. My brothers. My brothers. The men. Always the men. He, he didn't say to the women, well done, good and faithful servants. He didn't say, no greater faith has I seen in all of Israel. He didn't say, you of great faith, go to Galilee. He didn't say anything like this. He didn't say it because he didn't have to. The women, they, they were already on their way. They had heard enough from the angel. You had me at fear not. They had the faith they needed. They didn't need to hear any more. They were on their way first to tell the disciples, then off to Galilee. Jesus asked Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to tell his brothers to go to Galilee. There they would see him. He said this to the women because his brothers, his disciples, his best friends had lost their faith. They had nothing left. All that they had hoped for was nailed to a Roman cross and buried in a borrowed tomb. Their lives had all stopped. Their lives uh, uh, lived out over the past three years now had no meaning to them. All was lost. There was no hope. They were most of all to be pitied. The faith was gone. They had denied their friends. They had abandoned their friend. They had stood by and did nothing to stop his death. They were not worthy to be called disciples, friends, brothers. This is why Jesus tells Mary and the other Mary to tell them to go to Cali. It's amazing, really. The disciples were distraught for a reason, and a very good reason. They had indeed let their friend down. They had indeed stood by and let him be executed. They had indeed denied him, abandoned him. They had, to, they had sinned against their friend and teacher. And Jesus, Jesus raises from the dead, and the first thing he says Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Go tell my buddies to go home. There they will see me. It's, it's almost as if Jesus has forgotten the last three days. It's almost as, as, as if he had forgotten the denials, the abandonments, the scattering of the sheep in the garden. Almost as if he had forgotten the betrayals, the plots against him, the false accusations. It's almost as if he has forgotten the trumped up charges, the spitting in his face. It's almost as if he has forgotten the washing of Pilate's hands, the flogging from the guards, the crown of thorns. It's almost as if he had forgotten his forsakenness, the despair, shame. It's almost as if he had forgotten the nail. No, he hasn't forgotten anything. He has forgiven everything and everyone. And on this first evening morning, he cannot wait to share this forgiveness with those who think they will never receive it. His disciples. Jesus did what he set out to do. He died that we might have forgiveness of sins. He rose from the dead, the final foe, that we might have life. In life abundantly. It happened, you know. These things we read about in the Bible, that they, they happen. It's not a fairy tale. The Gospels each tell the story of real events in history. Real people telling a real story. It happened. Jesus walked this earth for, four, for 33 years. He was a rabbi whose ministry lasted three years. He was con convicted and sentenced to death, death by crucifixion. And he was buried by a man named Joseph from Arimathea. All these things, all these things are real moments in history. No one questioned these things. They are all attested to. They are all attested to by men, as it were. And according to the women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, on that first day, when they went to the tomb, when they went to the tomb of their friend to simply mourn, they witnessed an event that would change the world forever. They witnessed the angel roll away to stone to reveal an empty tomb. They met and worshiped the one who they had seen crucified three days earlier. They witnessed the love of this man for his friends. 
the ones who had done nothing to show their love over the past three days. According to these women, Mary and the other Mary, it happened. Just like that. And that had happened, that changes everything. There will be a day. There will be a day when I go to the cemetery in, in Shady Grove, Kentucky. In Shady Grove, Kentucky, to the gravesite of my father. I will go to remember and mourn a man who I hold no memories of. And on that day, on that day I will find him standing there in the garden that once was a tomb. I will find him standing there waiting for me, and I will no doubt meet him with great trepidation because things like this don't happen. But the angel of the Lord, the one with the appearance of lightning and the clothes white as snow, the one sitting on the green stone with my father's name on it, will only have to tell me once, fear not. Because there, standing next to my dad, will be the one who gives us all life, my friend, my teacher, a man from Nazareth in Galilee, who himself raised from the dead on that first Easter morning. What a day that was. What a day that will be. I believe that. I really do. Amen. Uh, another old gospel tune. Uh, most people, uh, probably on most people's favorite list. Here we go. Mm -hmm. telling of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ told from the Gospel of John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, 
Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrapping, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For, as yet, they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside of the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, standing where the body of Jesus had been lying, one on the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? They said to, she said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of our Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace and peace be to you as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Yes, this is a celebration unlike most of our other Easter Sundays, that's true. But in a few ways, it isn't all that dissimilar from the very first Easter Sunday. Events of the world have done some shaking up of things and uncertainty and even some level of anxiety are the normal right now. And it was the same way on that first Easter Sunday. Everything felt uncertain. Over these last few weeks, I've been trying to cautiously keep up to date with the national and the international news surrounding the COVID-19 virus, it, it feels unsettling that our understanding of what is happening in the world right now is about checking in on the status of things like the number of cases and the number of fatalities and how we are doing at slowing the number of cases. Someone much smarter than I, a seminary professor of mine, in fact, talked about it this way, which was checking in on the business of death. And it's important to keep ourselves out of the spiral of despair when we face challenges, finding ways to smile and laugh and to connect and to maintain hope and peace. But within that, we do still have this task in this world of checking in on the business of death. And in John's telling of the Easter narrative, we have Mary Magdalene 
checking in on the work of them. Not unlike what happens with us sometimes as we listen to the evening news. But what Mary finds is something that is so unexpected, she's not fully sure what to make of it. As she goes to check on the business of death, she finds life instead. She finds the miraculous. She finds Jesus. From that moment forward, Mary had the task, not of checking in on the business of death, but of checking in on the business of everlasting life. Mary Magdalene was the first one to proclaim the risen Christ. She was the first to spread the good news. And each of us as Christians are called, not unlike Mary, in our own way, not only to check in on the business of death, but to proclaim that death was defeated on that first Easter Sunday. Mary's instinct, scripture tells us, was to remain with Jesus, to stay there, probably to never leave his side again. However, she was called to another purpose. I've been doing a lot of thinking about what the church is called to do during this strange season. John's telling of the resurrection tells us that Mary did seem to want to cling to Jesus, but Jesus said to her, no, don't cling to me. Don't, don't hold on to me, but instead to go and share what she has learned. And in the same way, all Christians have an instinct, have a duty have a calling to share about what we have learned. I will be the first to admit that I do have an instinct to cling to our church buildings. That isn't to say that there's something bad about loving our church buildings. They, they offer us a way to gather and to celebrate and to be among our fellow Christians but we are called not to cling to our buildings, but to go out and to spread the message of Jesus in the world. The work of the church doesn't happen on Sunday morning. The work of the church happens throughout the week. The feeding of the church happens on Sunday morning. So, May we all follow Mary's lead. May we all run and tell others what we have seen and what we have heard. And that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us power. Send us love. Send us grace. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, from the very beginning, you gave the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers and as teachers, as leaders, especially women that arrived at 
the tomb this morning. Open our ears to the proclamation of every person on this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, all of your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in that song, Lord. Gracious Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the countries of the world experience disunity and experience conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we still weep with those who weep and we mourn with those who mourn. Cradle those who are fearful. Cradle those who are suffering. Cradle the dying. Assure them of your loving presence. Today, we particularly pray for healthcare workers, for first responders, for safety officers who work during this time, putting themselves at risk to serve your people. Be with them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, bless the creative and helpful service of leaders in this day. Bless musicians and ushers and greeters and worship assistants and preachers and readers and all who provide some form of service to your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live lives in the resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, with bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray, trusting in your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. One last tune, uh, I think you'll know it. I think, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine.
Thanks for indulging an old man, uh, a folly of, of being a rock star. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>